1993 was an amazing year for movies. But before we go right into Hollywood, let's talk about what else was going on that year. Gas prices were through the roof at $1.11. The beautiful Ford Taurus was the number one car over Honda Accord. The highest grossing video game worldwide was Capcom Street Fighter 2, and the number one console was Super Nintendo with the amazing graphics at 256 by 224 at 16 bits. And yes, that's Paul Rudd in that commercial. 1993 was an amazing year for sports. Dallas Cowboys were actually winning Super Bowls, defeating the Buffalo Bills, and having one of the best halftime shows of all time with Michael Jackson. The Toronto Blue Jays hit a walk-off home run to win the World Series. Belt, left field, way back, Blue Jays win it! Blue Montreal defeats LA for the Stanley Cup. And MJ and the Bulls were dominating the NBA, winning their third championship. And right after, MJ retires for baseball. R&B and rap was taking over the Billboard charts with hits like I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. We'll always love you. To Nothing But A G Thing by Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. It's like that and like this and like that. It's like this and wing. Now let's talk about Hollywood in 1993 and man there were some amazing movies from dinosaurs taking over the box office to a father dressing up as an old British woman to be a babysitter for his kid. And we even had our own live action Super Mario Brothers movie. And let's be honest, it wasn't that great. And the highest grossing stars of 1993 was Wesley Snipes, Julia Roberts, Steve Martin, Kevin Costner, and Whoopi Goldberg. So 1993 started off with the bang with the 65th Oscars. And you guys already know this is the Super Bowl for the films and the actors. This year, it was hosted by Billy Crystal. Academy Awards, I'm delighted to be here. I almost did not show, I have to tell you. I tried to pull out last week, but I had this oral agreement and so they held me to it. Our supporting actress was taken by Marissa Tomei for My Cousin Vinny. I'll tell you what I'm nervous about. I am in the dark here with all this legal crap. I have no idea what's going on. All I know is you're screwing up and I can't help. Now the film Unforgiven took multiple awards. It got Best Picture and Best Director with Clint Eastwood and Gene Hackman for Best Supporting Actor. Best Original Song with A Whole New World from Aladdin. Leading actress with Emma Thompson, Howard End, and best actor was Al Pacino, Scent of a Woman. Now, drama films were shining big in 1993 with A Bronx Tale starring Robert De Niro, a playing a father trying to keep his son away from the gang life. Now you just can't leave. I will never forget the look on their faces. All eight of them, their faces dropped. You got Blood In, Blood Out, very underrated films showing the East LA struggles with prison, drugs, gang war showing a path of three young men that took with this lifestyle talking so bad now i see and we went back in time to tombstone starring kurt russell bill paxton sam elliott and val kilmer as retired gunslingers who were willing to do what they had to do to restore order to lawless lands against ruthless cowboy gangs i didn't think you had it in you i'm your huckleberry and now we're moving to World War II with Schindler's List starring Liam Neeson being a businessman trying to protect the Jewish workers from the Nazi party. And I didn't. And I, I didn't. <laughs> now from drama to family movies was another great year for 1993. And we had Mrs. Doubtfire starring the late great Robin Williams playing a father who was willing to do whatever he can to be in his kids' lives to even dressing as a old, hilarious British lady to be a nanny for his kids. Oh, at first here's a woman. I'm getting hot flashes. And then we go with an underdog story with cool runnings, another classic story with four Jamaican bobslayers dreaming and competing in the Winter Olympics, even though they'd never seen snow. This was a true underdog story, and it brings you plenty of laughs and heartwarming moments. Come on, what's the smoking? <laughs> I'm not smoking, I'm breathing. And we also had two baseball stories that I grew up with and that was Rookie of the Year and The Sandlot. Rookie of the Year showed us 
how it would be with a kid breaking his arm and then healing to a point where he could throw the ball over 100 miles per hour in baseball and becoming a pro pitcher in the MLB. I'm the new pitcher. <laughs> To the sandlot that has become one of the most iconic baseball stories of all time with kids loving the game of baseball having memorable scenes to having a wild task to try to retrieve a baseball that was signed by babe ruth Ron, you bought for apples in the toilet and you like it you play ball like a girl yeah. and how about this disney classic and before i show you tell me this is this a christmas movie or a halloween movie now, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, it's The Nightmare Before Christmas. This film blew everyone away from the animation to the songs that we still sing after 30 years. This film is still one of the most watched films during the holidays. And we had more family movies like The Ninja Turtles Part 3, Free Willy, We're Back, and Hocus Pocus. Now, the action movies were still taking over the box office. In 1993, you had Wesley Snipes and Sylvester Stallone on top of their game with Demolition Man, Cliffhanger, and Rising Sun. You also had Jean-Claude Van Damme with multiple films like Nowhere to Run and Hard Target. You also had Bruce Willis with Striking Distance. And we had other great action films like The Fugitive starring Harrison Ford and Last Action Hero starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wait, where are you going? I'll be back. Ha, you did not gonna say that, did you? Now, to be honest, the scary movie genre wasn't the strongest that year. But we had cult classics like Leprechaun, Jason Goes to Hell, and the friendly Home Alone star Macaulay Culkin turning into a villain in Good Son. Now, in 1993, the comedy genre wasn't too bad. You had some cult classics like Coneheads. You had Mr. Nanny from with Hulk Hogan. You had Hot Shots Part Deux starring Charlie Sheen. You had Loaded Weapon with Emilio Estevez and Samuel Jackson. You had Sister Act Two with Whoopi Goldberg. So that wasn't too bad at all. I actually enjoyed a few of them and I still watch them today. Now let's go into the top three films of 1993. And that was The Firm starring a young Tom Cruise, The Fugitive starring Harrison Ford. And the number one film of that year was Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park making over $360 million of that year. And it really was the year of the dinosaur with merchandise, toys. The film was an absolute box office smash and it took over that year. 1993 was a great year for entertainment, films, gaming, commercials. It was an awesome time. But before we leave, I got one question for you. Was 1993 the best year for Hollywood? And guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will catch you on the next one. You guys take care. Much love. Peace out.